Is there anything about the job that you didn't expect that came as a surprise? Almost everything, I must say. What do you hope that your legacy in this role is? The way I think about it. Um, before, I flew in space and I represented Canada on spaceship and I worked within that aerospace field. Today, I, 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 I still work for my country. Is it difficult at all in your role to separate the politics from what you do or what you say? I think in this particular case, I spoke very much like I have as an astronaut, but I'm no longer an astronaut. Welcome to the kitchen at Rideau Hall. This is where meals are prepared for the Governor General, Rideau Hall employees, and guests of the residents. Everyone from Order of Canada recipients, visiting heads of state, presidents, royalty, and on this day, the Power and Politics crew for our inaugural Power Lunch. This is Julie Payette, a Canadian astronaut who spent more than 25 days in space, an accomplished piano player and chamber choir singer, a certified scuba diver, commercial pilot, multilingual. She's also the 29th Governor General of Canada. But since Payette was sworn in nearly one year ago, she has kept a low profile, especially in the media. The Governor General is our first Power Lunch guest. Hi, Your Excellency. Thank Hello. you so much for joining us today. It's great to see you. Pleasure. I appreciate your time. Uh, we're here in the inaugural segment of Power Lunch. It's our first segment. So I thought I'd start off talking about food. And we have this beautiful meal that's been put out here for us that we'll get into a bit later. It's gorgeous. It looks amazing. I don't even know what half the foods are. But you have some really cool food here from space that I'd love to ask you about. Tell me a bit about, first let's talk about this picture, and then we'll, we'll go over some of the food that you brought. On my second flight, uh, I was uh, put in charge of uh, preparing a special meal for the last day where the crew of the space station would be together with the crew of space shuttle mm -hmm. uh, just before we left to come back on Earth. So I said, absolutely, I will bring Canadian gastronomy to space. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. Of course, we had maple syrup of and course. maple cookies. Right. But my crew members, they ate all the maple cookies. <laughs> There's no such remnant. But what is fun is that I did bring back the bottles mm -hmm. uh, and here is the only the only surviving bit of maple syrup that we got from uh, from that second flight well, I had two bottles one got completely consumed in this one almost but what is interesting is that because we can't have liquids float in weightlessness in the cabin um, we put uh, things in sealed bottles put a little velcro so we can put it on the wall and uh, we have a little tether to the cap because when we remove the cap, we don't want the cap to go flying somewhere and not find it again. So it's tethered. Did it take any getting used to? I imagine it took some to eating in space. It does. Yeah. It does. Did you ever bit. get used to it, I should ask? Yes, you do. You do. Human beings, they're amazing. They get used to everything. It's just sometimes it just takes a little time. So that's the reason we have humans in space all the time mm -hmm. is to study and understand better uh, what weightlessness uh, does to the human body so that one day human beings will be able to go on long voyages and go to another planet mm -hmm. like Mars, something we have not done yet. Do you think we will? Yes, we will. Do you it's, think it's in our normal, lifetime? I, I would suspect so, but it's a, it's a complicated endeavor because Mars and, and Earth are not in the same orbit. I'm really hoping that uh, because it's so complex and because it's an endeavor that, that touches us all, that we will do it as many nations together and that the first person that will set foot on Mars will do it in the name of human beings, not, not a particular country. Back on Earth, <laughs> let me ask you about your current job. Is there anything about the job that you didn't expect that came as a surprise? Almost everything, I must say, because uh, I came from a very different field. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, um, I spent 22 years, uh, 17 of which I lived in the U.S. because I trained for Canada as a Canadian astronaut, mm -hmm. but with the NASA Corps because Canada, we, we don't have rockets that, are, that send people in space, and so we, we partner. Uh, with other countries for the transportation part. So the training was being done in Houston. So I spent 17 years in Houston. And then I came here at the request 
of, uh, of the prime minister of the government, and uh, I did not really know uh, all of the details about this job. I must say I take very seriously uh, the governance aspect. Uh, in the position of governor general, we represent the crown, which is an institution that is an absolute uh, essential part of the structure of how we run our country. Do you think you do that a bit differently than your predecessors might have? Or I don't do think so. I'm trying very hard to, to actually fill the shoes of my predecessors. It's really important is to recognize when people do great things or when people pursue an initiative or, are, or show enormous gener generosity or heart or bravery. And, and I'm very privileged. I, that's how I feel. I feel very privileged. Every single time a person comes at Rideau Hall or at La Citadelle, our second official residence in Quebec City, to uh, receive an honor. Um, it's not about the Governor General, it's about them. And that, that is really a cool part of the job, I must say. I want to ask you actually about that, sort of jumping off on that. What do you see as the, um, I guess, the role of the Governor General? I know you've named the specific, you know, the specific roles within the title, but where do you see taking the office, or what do you hope that your legacy in this role is? Wow, that's, that's a big question. Legacy, uh, I don't know. I'm really hoping I'm going to do a great job or a good job. Uh, that's what I did as an astronaut. I represent this country before. It's a bit of an extension, if you, the way I think about it. Um, before, I flew in space, and I represented Canada on spaceship, and I worked within that aerospace field. Today, I, 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 I still work for my country. Uh, I represent Canada and I, and I continue to do good work. So uh, I don't think about, about what it is in it for me, but what is, uh, how do I do as good a job? Uh, did it take any convincing for you to, to take this job? Uh, that gets an interesting question. Um, very, very little, um, perhaps because I served as a Canadian astronaut for so many years abroad. Um, to me, uh, when, when your, your country calls and asks you to serve, there's, there's only one answer. It's yes. Obviously. <laughs> if, uh, you know, sometimes there are circumstances, but uh, uh, yes, it's important. You made uh, a speech that, that got some criticism for, for exactly the opposite of what you just said, sort of this idea that uh, you, you talked about uh, climate change and religion and the idea that um, there was some perception that, that you were sort of scoffing at people who didn't believe or the other side of the science or that kind of thing. Did that, how did that affect you at the time and has it changed your perception or, or anything you've done since? You know, every, it's just like when you're, when you're saying, you know, Everything evolves, and I evolve too. <laughs> so I learned from lessons, and I think in this particular case, I spoke very much like I have as an astronaut, but I'm no longer an astronaut. So I have to adapt to the position and to the ways of saying that. I mean, in fact, my only point in there is the importance of debate, the importance of verifying, the importance of using critical thinking. This is really the point. And, uh, uh, sometimes details are taken out of context. Mm -hmm. But definitely to me, this is so important that we can debate in a civil, interesting, and learned fashion, anything. Because if we all thought the same way or, or went with the same outlook, uh, nothing would ever change or nothing would ever move about and innovation wouldn't exist. Mm -hmm. So what, it's a good thing. What did you learn from that experience? Well, I learned that uh, you have to be careful about how you say things, <laughs> but not what you say. I'm still convinced that, I'm sorry to say, the body of evidence shows that the planet is warming up, and it's warming up at a certain rate that has never been seen before in the history of the planet. So we are in a different time, and we have to take that seriously. These are global issues, though. Uh, we're not going to solve them in Ottawa, or we're not going to solve them in, uh, in Paris, or we're not going to solve them in, in Tokyo. 
we're going to solve them as a, as, as a planet. You're, you also represent the monarchy here mm -hmm. in Canada, and there is a lot of conversation, discussion, debate about the relevance of the monarchy and whether it's outdated or needs to be modernized. What's, what are your feelings on that? That's not for me to decide that. That's for the Canadian people Understood. to what, What's your perspective, I guess? My perspective is that currently we're a constitutional monarchy and we've been so for, for since this country existed. Uh, we're a very stable, prosperous, rich, tolerant and open country, so clearly somewhere something is happening. Um, we are, uh, and I see that now in my new role, structured in such a way that there is a, there, there is a many check and balance throughout what we do. We have two solid chambers. We have elected officials. We have good election systems. We have debates. We have political parties. We have open communication. Free press, very important. And we have, at the very top, the crown which is the institution that we represent, which at the moment I'm bestowed with the privilege of, of exercising. And that is the, the part of the structure of how we govern ourselves. And it's important. If the, if the Canadian people wish to change that system, I, I think that uh, a lot of debate and a lot of talk about this will be necessary because the system as it is, is a very good system. What's the hardest part of your job? No time. No time for yourself or no time to get it all done? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a demanding job. And, uh, and that is a little more difficult mm -hmm. when you have uh, uh, other responsibilities, and we all do at home. So it's, it's the same management every single person everywhere in Canada does. It's the management of the priorities of the family and, and, and what's happening at home and the priorities of the job. But as I mentioned earlier, the priorities of the jobs here are really important for Canada. So it's not about the person. Mm -hmm. So sometimes uh, the choice is made for me because of what I've said yes to. And that's okay. It's the same when you're an astronaut, by the way. Yeah? Yeah, you, know, you don't decide when you launch and, right. and you know, everything that happens. You're part of a team and of a group and of a direction. And I think you accomplish great things when you all agree on that direction and, and put effort toward that direction and let go of your personal agenda a little in favor of, of, of the team, of the group. Has it been an adjustment for your son? Uh, of course, it's an adjustment. He's a teenager. <laughs> That's a hard life anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's a trooper. That's good. Pluto, a planet or deserved its emotion, demotion? It never was a planet. So by the time we figured it out, then we took it out the roster. There's many other objects the size of Pluto in the vicinity, but it was so far, our instrument didn't look well. Now they do. So Pluto is actually not alone. It's got a lot of sisters and brothers Montreal. out there in the Kuiper Belt. <laughs> <laughs> Montreal bagels or Montreal smoked meat? Both. Great Big Sea or Celine Dion? Uh, different styles. So no choice. No, I love both. I, I know, and I took both their music to space. I took oh. food from Canada in space, but I also took CDs from all over the country. Justin Bieber or Justin Trudeau? Justin, in general. <laughs> <laughs> Texas barbecue or Quebec poutine? Oh, that's not fair. <laughs> that's not fair. Uh, you, you see, I spent 17 years in Texas, so we that's did we barbecue did. in our backyard almost every other day. I still do that in Montreal. Barbecue, barbecue. Barbecue. Uh, best part of Ottawa and the worst part of Ottawa? Weather and weather. <laughs> That's the best answer I've ever heard. Uh, favorite restaurant? I don't have any. No? Um, because I was very, very uh, privileged to grow up in Montreal. There's a lot of oh my gosh, restaurants. Fantastic. A lot of good Asian restaurants. I love Indian, Vietnamese. Best thing you ate in space and the grossest thing you ate in space? Actually, food is really good in space, contrary to what people think. But now I've got to leave you with one last thought. Okay. 
in space there's an etiquette. There's many little etiquettes in any world, mm -hmm. any environment. But in space when you eat, and when we are eating, we are eating and we put our food on, it's not really a table, but we Velcro things or we put bungees over things, we secure things, otherwise everything floats. Everything in here would float if we were in space. Because of that, sometimes there is pieces of food that start floating. And the etiquette requires that if it is edible, you open your mouth and you eat it. <laughs> because if not, that piece of food is going to fly and find itself at the screen in front of the main cabin fan. Right. And somebody will have to go and clean this up right. with the vacuum cleaner and it's not fun. So, the so if it's coming, you open your mouth. If it's fly floating by, you open your mouth and you eat it. Well, that's a neat thing to know. We'll leave, we'll leave it on that note. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time today. Thank yes, you. Yes, it is.